So just to reiterate what Guppy was saying there, Steve, uh, this is going to be a tag team battle royal uh, under Royal Rumble rules. Uh, we're going to start with two teams, and then a, each a new team is going to enter every 90 seconds. Uh, it's double elimination rules, so if you're eliminated, you have to go to the back, but it is still possible for your partner to win the match for you. And the, win and the winner of the match is going to be the last man standing or the last team standing. Undoubtedly, the uh, tag team champions, the SLI, are going to have an eye on this matchup as uh, their next uh, challenger is going to be determined out of this one. And our first uh, entries to the uh, to the Battle Royal are the uh, Flying Hurricanes, Kenny the Bastard, Takao. An international tag team, Takao, of course, from Tokyo, Japan, and Kenny the Bastard, a lizard from Auckland, New Zealand. As uh, once again, uh, we introduce other species into a wrestling match. IWS, like we said, it's always unique. And for those who have seen Kenny more recently, say in 2007 or 2008, of course, uh, Kenny being a lizard molted at a certain point and his appearance changed slightly. Who is Elsa Banks hitting on at that table there, Rocco? That would be me, foolishly, sending Elsa away. Uh, standing at the top of the ladder by the swimming pool, chanting down with the fans, doing 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, looking very cute doing so, and I was sitting at my table going, why the hell did I send her away? And just to explain here very briefly, Steve, um, about a year after the events uh, shown on this tape, uh, one of the tag teams that's uh, coming out here uh, is uh, the Kid Kamikaze Experience featuring Kurt Lauder, uh, or, no, or Kurt Lauderdale as he's known here. Um, Kurt Lauder killed a young girl, young 16-year-old girl named Shanna Poisson in his hometown of Hemingford, uh, buried her body in the woods, and she wasn't found for uh, more than three weeks. Uh, putting her parents through and, and friends and relatives through excruciating hell. Um, Kurt ended up a year later uh, confessing to the crime and being sentenced uh, to prison for his activities. His father died of a heart attack uh, subsequent to the events. Uh, so Kurt basically uh, essentially killed two people. Uh, and his uh, mother served uh, some time for uh, helping Kurt uh, hide his crimes. If this was a best of IWS DVD, we would never show a match featuring Kurt. But uh, because this is an historical event that we're uh, showing here, and because of some very important things that happened in this match afterwards, um, you know, it, it's absolutely essential for us to show it. Um, but uh, in no way should this be taken as an endorsement of Kurt Lauder or uh, of the horrible things that he did uh, a year after this match. Not at all, as uh, you know, WWE has Chris Benoit and they tried to erase him, but uh, you know, eventually, once in a while, they do have to show him in certain DVDs. And uh, we have Kurt Lauder, who uh, we should show in this match getting kicked by the Flying Hurricanes right now. And Taco using his educated feet to uh, work up the ladder on uh, Kurt Lauder. Um, and then uh, Kenny the Bastard uh, giving the coup de gras with a, a boot to the face off the ropes. And uh, Flying Hurricanes uh, may not be big, but uh, they're, they're up for the challenge to take on uh, uh, this team of the Kid Kamikaze experience. Uh, Kid Kamikaze, a very technically adept wrestler. Kurt Lauder, obviously, as you can see, uh, a huge wrestler, uh, very strong, very powerful, uh, very dangerous. And uh, Kurt is uh, trying to, to 
book Kenny out into the first row, but uh, not quite able to do that. And I think any second now we're going to have a, another team uh, coming into the ring here. Let's see who it is. Two point oh. Two point oh. Is this their? Is this is their, their, one of their first shows at the IWS. If I'm not it may in fact be their very first match in the IWS. Uh, two point oh, of course, a very old school tag team, uh, well known uh, in the province of Quebec. Uh, done a lot of work with a lot of other promotions, and there was a lot of uh, suspicion when they came into the IWS as to whether they would really fit with the IWS's hard hitting, uh, stiff, hardcore style. But, uh, you know, uh, 2.0 obviously, uh, you know, ended up uh, winning the IWS Tag Team titles uh, three different times over their careers. And uh, may, uh, may pick it up a few more times before they're done. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, you know, they were a success, uh, a bigger success than anybody anticipated them being. Jagged Shane Matthews, one of my favorite tag teams of all time in Quebec wrestling. And uh, they make their, seemingly their IWS debut here at a V, and they're getting the crowd into it. Absolutely, and uh, you know, one thing 2.0 are, are very good at doing is rallying up the crowd, but uh, you know, against a guy like Kurt Lauderdale and uh, a guy like Kid Kamikaze, uh, they're not going to give the newcomers an, an easy break here. Not at all, it's a sick, sick uh, suplex there on, onto Jagged. And uh, 2.0 go to the outside, and then Kenny the Bastard uh, doesn't really know what he's getting himself into, launches himself onto Kurt Lauderdale and pays for it with a catch, suit, catch and release suplex. Ooh, the dilator. Oh man, and Kenny's completely out of it. As 2.0 are wisely staying in the back. Takuo tries to roll the crowd up, but that's a bit of a mistake climbing up onto the first rope there, giving Kid Kamikaze and Kurt Lauderdale an opportunity to pitch him out and uh, Kenny jumps in to save his partner as uh, Takuo uh, gets thrown over the top ropes but is able to uh, bring himself back in and uh, for his pains for saving his partner, Kenny the Bastard eats another suplex. Assassins. I, I assume they are also making their debut in this matchup live. Right? Absolutely, and that would be Pipe and Wrench. Wrench is holding the pipe, and Pipe is holding the wrench. Now, where, where do these these individuals hail from, Michael? I, I understand it's somewhere near Metro Saint Michel, although I'm not entirely sure where exactly they hail from. I see, and uh, they they like like many others are making the very stupid mistake of charging Kurt Waterdale. Absolutely, and I, I think that's Wrench, and uh, he's calling for a slam here, but uh, yeah, you, you don't slam Kurt Lauderdale. Looks like he was trying to fondle Kurt more than, than pick him up there. As, yeah, not, not, not working out too well for, for I think, Wrench. Wrench going for some kind of powerbomb here, but he's not able to uh, lift up Kurt Lauderdale, and he appears to have strained his knee. And now he's he's getting the he's, he's getting the baton. he's getting the pipe from Wrench, okay, pipe. and and that would be pipe uh, going over the top with the pipe, leaving Wrench in the ring with the wrench. Okay. And Wrench hitting Kurt Lauderdale with the wrench, and having no better effect than pipe with the pipe. I think, I think Kurt's spitting at pipe. It did just as much as the pipe did onto Kurt. And that would be Wrench going to the outside. So the first tag team eliminated here, and uh, we should be expecting a new team momentarily. Thanks for coming, Pipe and Wrench, the last assassin. And this would be another huge, another huge wrestler here in the ring, Tomasino, accompanied by Dan Paisan. And of course, they've been in the IWS for a while. Tomasino, the big banana, as we call it. I love those big yellow pants. And Dan Paisan with a nice enziguri on uh, Kurt Lauderdale. Pretty much Dan Paisan, the first guy to get the Lauderdale to, uh, to I don't know, actually accept some uh, some damage here. 
First man to not take uh, Kurt Lauderdale and knock him off his feet. Very impressive on the part of Dan Paisan. And, uh, you know, that's a tag team that has a pretty good shot of making this because they've got a good combination of speed, technical ability, and size. Might similar as the Kid Kamikaze experience. Battle Royal rules here. Tag team uh, championship shot on the line. As you see, uh, Kid Kamikaze seemingly blind. Obviously from a, a, a classic 2.0 uh, I, I rate. And uh, we got Dan Paisan beaten down on Chain Down on Chain Matthews. Jagged beaten down on Kenny the Bastard. And the Big Banana at Tomasino kicking uh, Kid Kamikaze in the corner right now. And I'm sure another tag team is going to be coming down right now to the ringside. This would be T-Unit, that's uh, Big Larry in the blue and Dollar Bill in the red coming to the ring. Uh, T-Unit uh, also making their IWS debuts. As you heard, they are black, y'all, and they are ready to get into some action here. They're drawing the line in the sand, so to speak, against 2.0. And there's going to be a dance-off, apparently. 2.0 encouraging the dance-off. Big Larry showing his dancing skills. And Dollar Bill mixing up hip hop style. Kurt Lauderdale not showing any attention and just doing what he does best, doling out some pain. And now 2.0 are putting, you know, putting on some moves of their own. <laughs> what the hell? Wait, 2.0 trying to take advantage and I'm not quite sure what happened there. I, I think that was uh, there was a double Greco-Roman eye pokes right there. Ah. Yes, and as you can see, 2.0 taking advantage. And the Flying Hurricanes, Flying Hurricanes with double drop kicks to the back. And that sends 2.0 to the outside. 2.0, I've been eliminated. Such a shame. I had such high hopes for 2.0 in this matchup. But they are now out. And uh, I, I think that they're going to have stern words for the Flying Hurricanes after that, after that matchup, uh, once the, the Flying Hurricanes get to the back. Big Larry eating some offense from Dan Paisan there. We're going to have another tag team come to the ring right now. Let's see who it is. No, it's Los Latinos. <laughs> the Latino connection, Lacor. Latino Mysterio and Latino Kid. Absolutely. Latino Kid would be the short one, and Latino Mysterio would be the shorter one. Such two classic Latin superstars here getting in the ring. And uh, the, I think it's Latino Kid attacking uh, Don Paisan immediately. And, uh, of course, as has been remarked before in Quebec, Los Latinos uh, share an uncommon resemblance with the German bugs from A Bug's Life. Uh, Latino Mysterio there, very impressively taking Kurt Lauderdale off his feet with a low blow, followed by a spin kick. And uh, Tomasino is on the verge of going out with the Flying Hurricanes. Big Larry's in the corner. Oh, and Kurt Lauderdale just tossed Latino Mysterio to the outside. Leaving Latino Kid in the ring. And Tomasino just got eliminated by the Flying Hurricanes right into the second row. That's very impressive. Shocking here. Shocking development is we then see a pile driver from uh, Latino Kid. And Big Larry's on the top row. And some sort of double. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that was. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, action coming fast and furious here and uh, we should be anticipating another uh, team to come to the ring any second now Let's see who it is it's the other half of the SLI Lacor. absolutely Sans got a loot ain't down that Fred Lamalve Mark the Grizzly Fred Lamalve taking everybody down with flag shots from his Quebec flag. 
showing his patriotism and uh, using, I don't want to call it a foreign item because it's more of a domestic item in the ring at this time to gain an advantage. But uh, um, yeah, Kurt's not very impressed. <laughs> How interesting would it be if the SLI had to face the SLI? Uh, of course, the SLI is a ringside. No doubt they're cheering for uh, their, uh, their, their, opponent, their, their compatriots to win this match because then it would be a very easy match for them to fight in. Exactly. And you see Damien on the outside actually uh, getting to, uh, helping out as he grabbed the flag and started hitting some people from the outside of the ring here. I mean, obviously, they, they've got a, a horse in this race. They've got an incentive. They want to, uh, to see that uh, Fred the Malve and Mark the Grizzly win this match. And uh, that would essentially mean a, a, a month off for the SLI when they had uh, a tag team defense. And uh, it appears that we have a, another tag team making its way to the ring at this point. Oh, and it looks like Dollar Bill just got eliminated. Crazy Crusher and the motivator of madness has entered the uh, ringside area. And, and of course, Crazy Crusher, a uh, member of Extreme Revolution, former tag team champions in the IWS of Nightmare Manson. Unfortunately for Crazy Crusher, his partner Nightmare Manson was injured by Fred Lemerve and the SLI. So Crusher found himself joining with the fan favorites. Uh, you know, as much as self-defense as anything else to give himself an advantage against the SLI, who are a huge mob. And here we have him tagging with the Motivator Madness, who generally is, acts as more of a managerial role than anything else. Uh, Motivator Madness, of course, famous in the IWS for being a manager who never talks because, uh, you know, as a skeleton, uh, as we refer to him as Skeletor, having no lungs, he can't actually talk. Now, IWS wrestlers are method actors, what can I tell you? And, uh... Crazy Crusher taking out everybody with a suplex off the top rope on I think it was Taco O and leaving just Mark the Grizzly and, and Fred LeMerve standing. And uh, you know, Fred Fred is preening there, showing off. He grabs Crazy Crusher. Looks like he's gonna try and uh, give Crazy Crusher his pedigree in the middle of the ring. And Motivator Man just took his mask off. That's Nightmare Manson! What? Nightmare Manson is making his comeback, attacking the man who injured him, and they're going to be giving it looks like a, a spike pile driver in the middle of the ring. Oh, Fred just got taken down by the reunited Extreme Revolution. We got another tag team coming to the ring lot for it. Let's see who it is. I'm not quite sure whose music this is like, or I hear the new shit by Marilyn Manson playing over the uh, PA system right now in the spag as this uh, battle royal continues on as we reach about the 17-minute uh, mark here of this matchup. Uh, the, the and this total. will be the 10th team coming out. And honestly, yeah. I didn't think the IWS had 10 teams. What the fuck? That's Sid Vicious! What the hell is Sid Vicious doing in the IWS? Sid hasn't been seen in a wrestling ring since he injured his leg gruesomely during WCW Greed 2001. That was three years ago. And here he is coming to an IWS ring with PCO to the sound of the new shit. Sid Vicious is back. What the fuck is that? Oh my God, it's... Oh. Sid is... Sid is attacking everyone with a chair. That's almost it's, unfair. Sid, Sid Vicious is practically seven feet tall and he's hitting people with a chair. Listen to the crowd, Lacor. The crowd is going absolutely apeshit and no wonder no one expected Sid Vicious to make an appearance. I don't think anybody in the wrestling world thought that Sid Vicious would ever set foot in any wrestling ring anywhere in the world, let alone in the wrestling ring of the IWS. The IWS has been known to pull off some major surprises in its history, but this is this has got to be the one to cap it all off. It's Sid, 
Sid Vicious in the middle of the ring right now, just waiting, seemingly waiting to strike. Wait, who's gonna have the balls to get in the ring first and take on Sid? And it's Takao who gets his head taken off. Takao takes it off, and then, oh, a lariat on Kenny the Bastard slams it down on his own partner. So Takao can now, to this, you know, will for the rest of his life be able to say that the first man that Sid Vicious attacked after coming back from three years after a gruesome injury was Takao. Oh, and, and he's got, he's got uh, Kenny the Bastard up on his shoulders. Uh, he's motioning for, I don't believe it. Tilt the world, power slam to the third row. He just launched Kenny the Bastard into the fans and Kenny the Bastard's been eliminated. And now Takao has been lift up. Oh, it pitched into the second row by Pierre Carlet. Oh man, who's gonna challenge these two monsters in a battle royal? Michael, I'm, I'm speechless. I am speechless that Psycho Sid Vicious is in an IWS ring right now, and the crowd is still going apeshit. And, and can you blame them? I mean, no one expected this to happen. I think I can safely say that this is the biggest surprise that any wrestling promotion anywhere has ever given people. No one thought Sid Vicious would ever wrestle again, ever. Don Faisan uh, seemingly trying to get his confidence up here. <laughs> Big Larry also uh, considering stepping into the ring here to take on Sid. Big boot. And yeah, they're going to pay right now. The new shit clearing out the ring here. Oh, Big Larry's caught. Looks like he's gonna eat the choke slam. Choke slam on Big Larry. And Big Larry's broken in half. And Dan Paisan trying to talk himself into being able to attack Sid Vicious. But you know, you're not gonna win a battle of the mouth against Sid Vicious. And looks like Dan Paisan's gonna eat a choke slam as well. Oh man. Oh, Nightmare Manson eating a choke slam from PCL and the new shit are just dominating. Here goes Dan Paisan. Dan Paisan's been eliminated. Nightmare Manson thrown out by Sid Vicious. Nightmare Manson's been eliminated. Oh, man. Who's gonna challenge these guys? Oh, okay, there's a reason that we call Crazy Crusher, Crazy Crusher, okay? It's because the boy's not right. Apparently, he's going to take on not only one former WWE superstar, but two at the same time. Here we go. Oh, holding him up and like a razor's edge. Oh, to the outside, through a table. Oh, Crusher, you just got eliminated right to the hospital. Is there anybody left? Have they actually eliminated everybody? Are they the winners of this match? It could very well be. It's hard to tell, Lacor, as everyone bailed when they saw the sight of Psycho Sid Vicious in, in an IWS ring. Big Larry back in there again. Wasn't he eliminated already? I think so. Oh, sit out choke slap for PCO. Big Larry paying for getting back into the ring there. Oh dear. No, 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 no. No, we haven't seen this in years. Could it be? Could it be the infamous power bomb from Psycho Sid? He's asking the crowd for, for approval. That crowd's just going completely berserk. Oh, last ride power bomb. Oh, Big Larry's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the momentum carrying him right out into the crowd and into the back where no doubt medical attention will be forthcoming. Look at these, the looks of shock and awe on some of the fan faces outside the ring here. And they are still going nuts. Psycho Sid. Psycho Sid back in the wrestling world. And Mark the Grizzly. Mark the Grizzly hasn't been eliminated. He has a long history with Pierre Carlet. Looking right into Pierre Carlet's eyes. And Mark the Grizzly eliminates himself. <laughs> Gonna live to fight another day. 
Smart move, Mark. Smart move. It's probably good for our fans, because I don't think it would have been good when Mark the Grizzly went flying into the crowd. Wasn't Dan Paisan already eliminated? I think so. Oh, sit out choke slam on Dan Paisan. Apparently, apparently we have some suckers for punishment here. Uh, something. Oh, and this Kid Kamikaze, we know the Kid Kamikaze hasn't been eliminated yet, and neither is Kurt Lauder. I think these are the last two competitors left, the last team left, who could possibly challenge new shit. I didn't know there was timeouts in wrestling, but uh, Psycho Sid Vicious is calling for one right now. Well, he, he Psycho Sid, he has his own rules. Apparently. And now they're calling for the mic. Uh, let's see what they have to say. Who, who, would, who would give Sid Vicious a microphone? I don't know, some idiot maybe. understand a word he said Lacor. all i can tell you steve is that the night before this show i was at the uh, bar unison in saint laurent with sid vicious and he said pretty much exactly what he just said there on the microphone and i thought he was explaining the philosophy like his his wrestling thesis of how southern tag works 
and honestly, it didn't make any sense to be drunk. I didn't realize he was rehearsing a promo on me. And sober the next day here, listening to it, it didn't make any sense. And here, listening to it four years later, it still doesn't make any sense. He's sober right now? No, no, I meant I was drunk the night before oh. when he was ex- trying to explain this to me. Yeah, I, I just understood, fuck you. And it's <laughs> been a thousand days since he wrestled and tell me about Sid Vicious. The interesting thing here, both Kurt Lauderdale and uh, Kid Kamikaze trained by Pierre Coilette for Jacques Rougeau. So uh, very much a case here of the, uh, the teacher battling the students. Is, is that what uh, Sid Vicious tried to explain to us? No. No? Okay. I, I, I do know that at this point, I, I think at some point, somewhere along here, uh, the, the rule about being eliminated by going over the top rope got thrown out. Um, yeah, not- Sid, Sid, Sid decided to create his own impromptu tag match. I think that's what he meant by you choose a corner and I'll choose a corner. And then he started counting feet so that he knew what the center of the ring was, as you just saw, and I, I don't know why. I, I think he was trying to demonstrate, you know, uh, w- what the wrong side of the ring would be and where, you know, when you they keep wrestlers talk about cutting off the ring. But um, usually wrestlers kind of leave that for people like, commentators like us to explain rather than explaining it to the crowd exactly but yeah why, why do they call the new shit anyway <laughs> i don't like i don't know why they came out and called themselves the new shit i i do like marilyn manson but i am not sure why, why is it the new shit I, we're completely disregarding the fact that the kamikaze is just getting kicked the shit out of in the corner right now as you would expect with these two large individuals against Kid Kamikaze, Sid steps in the ring for one-on-one action. Yeah, Kurt Lauderdale actually able to hold his own against Pierre Carvalet, but Kid Kamikaze uh, really not able to, and you know, Sid Vicious against Kid Kamikaze is uh, not any fairer of a contest. Just, just put in the boots to Kid Kamikaze. You, you, you almost feel bad for Kid Kamikaze here as, uh, you know, Sid Vicious taking out all the frustration of the thousand days of not being able to wrestle, all the frustrations of that broken leg that he suffered in WCW, and just, uh, you know, kicking the snot out of Kid Kamikaze, uh, using all of that anger and frustration against him. But uh, the crowd's really enjoying it. Surprisingly, yes. Uh, with, Still. With, with the possible exception of uh, Kid Kamikaze's father, who I seem to recall was coming over to me right now and going, um, can you do something about that large man who's beating the crap out of my son? The cameraman there in the background is seemingly rather excited taking photos of Sid's ass. And Sid's putting uh, Kid K into a camel clutch here. With some sort of variation of that. Whatever Sid th- feels like he feels like doing. Oh, you know, this this match, this world, this ring, this promotion right now operating under Sid's rules. International Sid Wrestling right here <laughs> on DVD, ISWB. Absolutely. This, Sid is large and in charge. And Kid Kamikaze doing everything he possibly can to make it to his partner, Kurt Lauderdale. Look at Sid whispering. And just sweating like a... Like a pig onto Kid Kamikaze right now. What is he going to go for here? Dragging him by his feet to the corner and tagging out. Such a great matchup so far. Well, it's obviously Kid Kamikaze is is really not uh, the kind of wrestler who's going to be able to stand toe-to-toe with a guy like Derek Carlouet, with a guy like... Uh, uh, Sid Vicious, oh god, brutal, brutal DDT right there. And that's going to be it's a over. Kid Kamikaze, it's over. And the match is won, the new shit are victorious. Doesn't that make the new shit the new number one contenders for the tag team titles, like for? Unfortunately for this, I believe it does. We're back. Um, Kurt Lauderdale apparently is taking exception though. Apparently no one told Kurt Lauderdale, or at least Kurt Lauderdale is trying to re- remind people that this is technically a double elimination match. True. And uh, uh, there looks like they're going to try and powerbomb the massive Kurt Lauderdale. See if you can barely hold him up. Oh. <laughs> you know, he does have a bum leg. does have a bum leg. Kurt Lauderdale, you know, larger than your average bear. Yes. And, uh, you know, as a consequence, getting him up for a powerbomb, not easy, but as a double team, they managed it. Bear. 
Uh, do we have another bear? That's two matches with bears tonight. <laughs> uh, Why? See, look, Sid's petting him like a bear. <laughs> and now he's laughing. Uh, he's called Psycho Sid for a reason. Apparently. As he holds Kurt Lauderdale's face and will go for a choke slam. And uh, it looks like uh, Pierre Carlet was calling for the cannonball, uh, the, his famous Quebecer cannonball that he wasn't able to hit against El Generico. So it looks like Kurt Lauderdale is going to take the full brunt of that as he goes up top. And uh, it looks like Sid Vicious is going to perform the role normally performed by Jacques Rougeau when this cannonball was performed in the WWE and flick his wrist so that uh, to help uh, Pierre Carlet do the cannonball. I wonder if he'll break his wrist. Help! No. He's lucky he made it through. And PCO holding Kurt Lauderdale for a three count, I suppose, so that they can win a second time the same time. Um, Whatever Sid says goes. And I, I should say for those of us, people who are listening to this DVD that you kind of have a choice at this point. You can either um, go to the next bit of the DVD where you can listen to Sid Vicious rant for 25 minutes, which we are not going to commentate on because it really speaks for itself. Or you can join me and Steve back here while we give our commentary for the main event, which is an IWS old school death match. Warning. Absolutely uncomprehensible rant about to follow from the new shit. And I think we may get an explanation of what the new shit is. I think there's a midget on the way. Um, for, for those wondering why we've been so negative during the last 10 minutes of this DVD commentary, um, we were there live. We know why, and you'll you'll all learn why as well. That Psycho Sid, um, this uh, well, uh, just to mention, SLI is apparently taking their matchup right now. They decided <laughs> to defend the belt. I don't know if the belts are on the line, but <laughs> they're getting a double double uh, kick to the face. And so yes, prepare yourselves, folks, for the uh, for the ramblings of Sid, as uh, they they are quite. Wait to listen. So, uh, yeah, so the, the only promotion in the world brave enough to bring Sid Vicious back after he put, snapped his leg three years later. It's also the only promotion in the world dumb enough to give Sid an open microphone and as much time to talk as he wanted. So if you're ever wondering what would have happened if the WWE had said, hey Sid, yo, just go out there and say whatever the hell's on your mind. 